Hi there, welcome to Oil for the Journey. I am your journey reader, Stephanie, and we are gonna be reading from 2 Chronicles, chapter 32 through 34. Um, and we are continuing on with the Bridges for Peace, Ignite the Truth Bible reading series. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and start us off in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to sit down um, and read your word, Lord. We're just praying right now, Lord, whoever is joining us today, Lord, just to um, speak to us, Lord, open up your word, um, give us eyes and ears, Lord, that are open and willing to learn and hear from you. And we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's get started with 2 Chronicles chapter 32. After these deeds of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them over to himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come, that his purpose was to make war against Jerusalem, he consulted with the leaders and commanders to stop the water from the springs which were outside the city, and they helped him. Thus, many people gathered together who stopped all the springs and the brook that ran through the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? And he strengthened himself, built up all the walls that were broken, raised it up to the towers, and built another wall outside. Also, he repaired the millow in the city of David and made weapons and shields in abundance. Then he set military captains over the people, gathered them together to him in, in the open square of the city gate, and gave them encouragement, saying, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, nor dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him, for there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh. With us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. After this, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent his service to, to Jerusalem. But he had all, he and all the forces with him laid siege against Lachish to Hezekiah king of Judah and to all Judah who were in Jerusalem saying thus says Sennacherib king of Assyria in what do you trust that you remain under siege in Jerusalem does not Hezekiah pursue persuade you to give yourselves over to die by famine and by thirst saying the Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars and commanded Judah and Jerusalem saying you shall worship before one altar and burn incense on it do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of other lands were the gods of the nations of those lands in any way able to deliver their lands out of my hands who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people from my hand, that your God sh should be able to deliver you from my hand? Now therefore, do not let Hezekiah deceive you or persuade you like this, and do not believe him, for no God of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people from my hand or the hand of my fathers. How much less will your God deliver you from my hand? Furthermore, his servants spoke against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. He also wrote letters to revile the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not deliver his people from my hand. Then they, came, they called out with a loud voice in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who, who were on the wall to frighten them and trouble them, that they might take the city. And they spoke against the God of Jerusalem as against the gods of the people of the earth, 
the work of men's hands. Now because of this, King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried out to heaven. Then the Lord sent an angel who cut down every mighty man of valor, leader and captain in the camp of the king of Assyria, so that, returned, so that he returned shamefaced to his own land. And when he had gone into the temple of his God, some of his own offspring struck him down with a sword there. Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all others, and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts to the Lord of Jerusalem and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations thereafter. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And he prayed to the Lord, and he spoke to him and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah did not repay, according to the, fa the favor shown to him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore, wrath was looming over him and over Judah and Jerusalem. Then Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah had very great riches and honor, and he made himself treasuries of gold and silver and precious stones, spices for shields and for all kinds of desirable items, storehouses for the harvest and the grain, wine and oil, and stalls for all kinds of livestock and folds for flocks. Moreover, he provided cities for himself possessions of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him very much property. This same Hezekiah who stopped the water outlet of Upper Gihon and brought the water by tunnel to the west side of the city of David, Hezekiah prospered in all his works. However, regarding the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon, whom they sent to him, to inquire about the wonder that was done in the land, God withdrew from him in order to test him, that he might know all that was in his heart. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his goodness, indeed, are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, and in a book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So Hezekiah rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the upper tombs of the sons of David. And all Judah and their inhabitants of Jerusalem honored him at his death. Then Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. But he did evil in the sight of the Lord, according to the abominations of the nations who the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built the the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down. He raised up altars for the Baals and made wooden images and he worshiped all the host of heaven and served them. He also built altars in the house of the Lord of which the Lord had said in Jerusalem, shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the host of heaven and the two courts of the house of the Lord. He also caused his sons to pass through the fire of the valley of the son of Hinnom. He practiced soothsaying, used witchcraft and sorcery, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He made much evil in the he did much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. He even set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said. To David and to Solomon and his son in this house and in Jerusalem which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel I will put my name forever and I will not again remove the foot of Israel from the land which I have appointed for your fathers only if they have only if they are careful to do all that I have commanded according to the law the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses so Manasseh seduced Judah 
and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they would not listen. Therefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the army of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze fetters, and carried him off to Babylon. Now when he was in affliction, he implored the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. And he prayed to him, and he received his entreaty, heard his supplication, and brought him back to Jerusalem in his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. After this, he built a wall outside the city of David on the west side of Gihon, in the valley as far as the entrance of the fish gate, and it enclosed Ophel. And he raised it to a very great height. Then he put military captains in all the fortified cities of Judah. He took away the foreign gods and the idol from the house of the Lord and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem. He cast them out of the city. He also repaired the altar to the Lord, sacrificed peace offerings and thank, thank offerings on it, and commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people still sacrificed on the high places, but only to the Lord their God. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, his prayer to his God, and the words of his seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel, Indeed, they were written in the book of the kings of Israel. Also, his prayer and how God received his entreaty and all his sin and trespass and the sites where he built high places and set up wooden images and carved images before he was humbled. Indeed, they are written among the sayings of Hosei. So Manasseh rested with his fathers and they buried him in his own house. Then his son Amon reigned in his place. Now Amon was 22 years old when he became king and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. But he did evil in the sight of the Lord as his father Manasseh had done. For Amon sacrificed to all the carved images which his father Manasseh had made and served them. And he did not humble himself before the Lord as his father Manasseh had humbled himself, but Amon trespassed more and more. Then his servants conspired against him and killed him in his own house. But the people of the land executed all those who conspired against King Amon. And the people of the land made his son Josiah king in his place. Now Josiah was eight years old when he became king and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of God. And he walked in the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, <clears throat> he was still young, and he began to seek the God of his father David. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the wooden images, the carved images, and the molded images, and they broke down the altars of the Baals in the presence, in his presence, and the incense altars which were above him, them, he cut down, and the wooden images and carved images and the molded images he broke in pieces and made dust of them and scattered it on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He also burned the bones of the priests on their altars and cleansed Judah and Jerusalem. So he did that in the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, Simeon, as far as Naphtali and all around with axes. When he had broken down the altars and the wooden images, he had beaten the carved images into powder, and he cut down all the incense altars throughout all the land of Israel, he returned to Jerusalem. In the 18th year of his reign, when he had purged the land and the temple, he sent Shaphan, the son of Azalea, Mas Maseah, the governor of the city, and Joah, the son of Johaz, the recorder, to repair the house of the Lord his God. 
When they came to Hilkiah, the, the high priest, they delivered them the money that was brought into the house of God, which the Levites, who kept the doors, had gathered from the hand of Manasseh and Ephraim, who all from all the remnant of Israel, from all Judah and Benjamin, and which they had brought back to Jerusalem. Then they put it in the hand of the foreman who had the oversight of the house of the Lord, and they gave it to the workmen who worked in the house of the Lord to repair and restore the house. They gave it to the craftsmen and builders to buy hewn stone and timbers from beams and to floor the houses which the kings of Judah had destroyed. And the men did the work faithfully. Their overseers were Jahath and Obadiah, the Levites of the sons of Menari, Merari, and Zechariah and Meshalem of the sons of the Kohathites to supervise. Others of the Levites, who all who were skillful with the instruments of music, were over the burden bearers and were overseers of those who did work in any kind of service. And some of the Levites were scribes, officers, and gatekeepers. Now when they brought out of the money that was brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found a book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. Then Hilkiah answered and said to, Sh to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan. So Shaphan carried the book to the king, bringing the, king's, bringing the king word, saying, All that was committed to the servants they are doing, and they have gathered the money that were found in the house of the Lord, and have delivered it into the hand of the overseers and the workmen. Then Shaphan the scribe told the king, saying, Helkiah the priest has given me a book, and Shaphan read it before the king. Thus it happened when the king heard the words of the law, that he tore his clothes. Then the king commanded Hilkiah, Iakim, Akam, the son of Shaphan, Abdon, the son of Micah, Shaphan, the scribe, and Isaiah, a servant of the king, saying, Go, inquire of the Lord for me, for those who are left in Israel and Judah concerning the words of the book that I found, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is poured out on us, because our fathers have not kept the word of the Lord to do according to all that is written in this book. So Hilkiah and those the king had appointed went to Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, the son of Tok Tokath, the son of Hazra, keeper of the wardrobe. She dwelt in Jerusalem on the second quarter. And they spoke in her, they spoke to her to that effect. Then she answered them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Tell the men who sent you to me. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will bring calamity on this place and all of its inhabitants. All the curses that are written in this book, which they have read before the king of Judah, because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods, that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands. Therefore, my wrath will be poured out on this place and not be quenched. But as for the king of Judah, who sent you to inquire of the Lord, in this manner you shall speak to him. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, concerning the words which you have heard, because your heart was tender and you humbled yourselves before God when you heard his words against this place and against its inhabitants. And you humbled yourself before me, and you tore your clothes, and you wept before me. I also have heard you, says the Lord. Surely I will gather you to your fathers, and you shall be gathered to your grave in peace. And your eyes shall not see all of the calamity which I will bring on this place and its inhabitants. So they brought back word to the king. Then the king sent and gathered all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem, the king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the Levites, and all the people great and small. And he read in the hearing 
in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the house of the Lord. Then the king stood in his place and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of the covenant that are written in this book. And he made all who were present in Jerusalem and, Benj and Benjamin take a stand. So the inhabitants of Jerusalem did according to the covenant of God and God of their fathers. Thus Josiah removed all the abominations from all the country that belonged to the children of Israel and made all who were present in Israel diligently serve the Lord their God. All his days they did not depart from following the Lord of their fathers. That concludes this uh, Bible reading. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you next time.